boom. Oh, and right when I go, my camera ceases to work because that's how it goes, you know, on the internet when you're live. What's up, everybody? This is DTM Delta Tango Mike. And if you can't see me, it's because my camera decided to quit. And uh, but you can hear me because my microphone is still working. So let's see if I can get that camera back up while I'm still talking. I am DTM Delta Tango Mike. And we're hanging out at Binders. And we are live on uh, the Sketching and Drawing Discord. We are live on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. No, we're not on Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, Behance, LinkedIn. And I'm just going to have to change camera. Let me see. Yes, you're going to have to see me close up. There it is. It's close up. There's, there's no way out of it. I had a better camera, though. Yeah. All right. So, yes, I am DTM Delta Tango Mike. We're live in here uh, at Binders Art. So, some quick uh, announcements real quick. We are um, having workshops and classes here at Binders in the classroom right here, right now, every two weeks. So, every two weeks, you can come and hang out. And uh, we discuss uh, a lot of different things, including drawing techniques with uh, tech, traditional, and digital. And we um, share our work and we talk about the business of art. Today is one of those days where we're going to discuss the business of art. I have a list of things to talk about and share with you. So uh, get ready to go over some notes. And don't worry, if you're watching this live, please feel free to ask a question. Leave a comment in the chat and I will answer your question. And uh, But if you're watching the replay, please feel free to get in touch with me, send me questions and uh, through your favorite way to connect and I will answer them. And maybe if your question is interesting enough, I'll make a video about it. I like making videos. I love, love uh, video because if you're not here watching this in, in person, then you can at least catch the video later and still learn from it. All right, so what are we here to talk about, Dan? And big ups to the folks who are in the room. Man, that, that's cool. I got some people in here. You can't see them, but they're here. We have Samantha, Kathy, and what's your name? Mariano. Mariano. Oh, there's some cool names here in the house. Word up. All right, so let's get to it, Dan. What are we here to talk about, Dan? We're here to talk about the art business fundamentals. And, uh, and so I'm going to call this, there it is, art business fundamentals for creatives. And uh, we have a comment, analog girl. Hi, yes, yeah, sir. What's up? What's up? Joining us on YouTube. Thank you so much. And let me uh, go ahead and grab this. Uh, boom, boom, boom. This here, trying to set up my camera because I want to be in the picture. I don't know why this, uh, my camera just quit. It's just, it's just does things, you know. It tests, it tests your patience. Technology, when it works, is awesome. When it doesn't work, you're like, why? Why, Steve Jobs? All right, here we go. That's it. Boom. All right. So we're here to talk about our business fundamentals for creatives in 2024. And, um, you know, because we are in 2023. It's crazy. It's crazy what, what year we're in already. And, uh, and so it's time to be prepared for next year. And so the key word for today is positioning. And everything I'm going to talk about is positioning. And so <clears throat> before I jump into it, I will share a little bit about me. My name is Dan Flores. I am a 2D illustrator. I go by DTM or Delta Tango Mike. Delta Tango Mike is my artist name and um, The Creative Genius is my title. And you can find me online through either one of those. The Creative Genius, that's my website also and Instagram, Twitter. And then Delta Tango Mike is also my Instagram, Delta, uh, Twitter and all that and website. Uh, Vector Maestros is where I teach uh, 2D illustration. And that's uh, digital and traditional. Uh, but I've been uh, for past uh, over 20 years now, been, uh, been drawing, getting paid to draw. I worked in uh, digital art, graphic design, concept art, vector illustration, and traditional arts. So I love to draw. I love everything about art. I don't want to do anything else with my life. That's it. Talk to me about drawings, and I'm happy. Uh, so that's who I am. You can find out more about me by uh, checking out those websites if you want. And if you're here in person, you get a sticker. So Mariano's going to get a sticker. 
All right, so everything starts with positioning. I'm going to talk about uh, five things and, uh, and a little bit of extra, uh, more than five things. But, uh, but it starts with positioning. And what is positioning? And uh, this is not, I also want to say, this is not like the full list of what it takes to be an artist in 2024 or every day. It's more about some of the things that are helpful along the way. So there's always going to be something extra that you can add, another list that's out there. This is called. Um, this is also called market market positioning, and so there's more definitions and more steps. But to me, these are some of the things that we need to be aware of moving into the next year, so that you can uh, realize that career that you want. And uh, and we all have different definitions of success. So you know, it's not about Lamborghinis and Gucci. It's about you being happy with what you want. So it starts with positioning. And what is positioning is to put yourself or arrange yourself in a particular place or way. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> and so what that means is that, like in any sport, most sports, you know, there's someone, like in football, somebody's trying to score uh, some, uh, the, to, and take the ball from one end of the field to the other. And there's always somebody else who wants to stop them. And that's positioning. You know, and, uh, and so in football... There's uh, the person with the ball wants to get over there, and uh, and you're there to position yourself in between to stop them. And uh, and so in art and in the business and business in general, positioning is where on one side you have the client, and on the other side you have the art product, whatever product that is, and you want to be in the middle of that. You want to be able to intercept that client who wants that art product and say, buy that art product from me. Get it through here. That's why Walmart sells shoes, hats, jackets, eggs, milk, TVs. <clears throat> right? They position themselves. You know, if you, if you don't want to walk into Walmart, you go to Target. Same thing. Right? It's crazy. If you want to buy lots of it, go to Costco. <laughs> they position themselves. Right, and so and so that's how you have to look at your. You don't have to, you know, position yourself and say, "Well, I draw and I paint and I do graphic design." You don't have to be like me, um, but the the part of you having the supply of that art product and positioning yourself in front of that client who wants that art product. And so we were talking about this earlier about festivals and stuff. And so in Atlanta, there's a Dogwood Festival. I think it happens in the spring. And so at Piedmont Park and uh, downtown and midtown Atlanta, that's where we are in Atlanta, they, uh, they have this big festival. And, uh, and over 50% of the booths is the uh, art. So when people go to the Dogwood Festival, festival, they know they're there to buy art. So if you do landscapes, if you uh, paint boats, draw, draw boats or paint boats, um, if you paint animals and pets, if you paint abstract, if you paint ducks or whatever, right? There's room for you because a lot there's different types of people who like different types of art, and so now you have to, now you're in position, you know, and, and and that's what you do. Like if and when you're good at selling, you have your table and your booth, and and you yourself don't sit behind the the table and sit there like this. You stand in front of your booth, and you position yourself in front of people. Say, how are you doing? I hope you're enjoying your, your day today. Stop on in. I got some free stuff for you. What's that? Everybody likes free. I got free stickers. I got free stickers. All you got to do is walk on in and, and take it. Do you like stickers? And some people do like stickers. Bam, you just position yourself. You intercept it. It's like there's little, lots of ways to interpret this, right? And that's what I mean by positioning. I can go on and on. I got lots of stories. So positioning in this case refers to the place you want your brand or product to have within a particular target market. And this is where positioning works. You have to have a target market. You have to know who you're talking to. More specifically, the process of market positioning and brand positioning involves how to market your brand or product to consumers to achieve that position. So. At the end, the goal is to lead, 
let the client walk off with your art product after paying you. That's the goal. That's what you want. So you got to do all those things that get you into position to make that happen. And if you paint yachts and boats, right, but you're at an art show in a warehouse, nothing wrong with those. I'm just saying, just kind of making a really, really particular point here. An example, because I've been there, I've done it, where uh, it's a couple dollars to get in the door and two dollar beers and uh and there's musical acts <clears throat> you you're not going to sell your five thousand dollar painting in that event when folks are dressed up and hanging out looking good and trying to flex and floss because that's not the kind of customer that wants to buy a five thousand dollar painting of a yacht to 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 while they're hanging out getting drunk and enjoying themselves you know like you you got to find the right market for this. So what you do is you wait for the next uh, boat show at the World Congress Center, and you uh, you submit for a booth, and now you have your five thousand dollar paintings because there's two hundred thousand and five hundred thousand and two million dollar boats in there, and these are the people who have the money. They love the boats so much. That they're like, you know what, I'm going to buy that $2 million boat, and this guy has a painting of that boat. And now I just want him to change the name and put my boat name on it, and boom. That's how market positioning is. you got to find the market for the thing that you paint, the thing that you do. And so that's what this means right here. Positioning refers to the place you want your brand or product to have within a particular target market. All right. So what is that? So I gave you some examples, but let's get down to it. There's five types of positioning. There's the market positioning, product positioning, brand positioning, price positioning, and competition, competition based. And all of them kind of revolve together. There's not one. You don't just pick one and say, well, I'm just going to do. You, it doesn't happen that way. It, it's, all, it's all part of the same thing. I had one, exa one story and one example about the football. And this kind of plays into it. You got to do all of these things constantly 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 to the point where you're so well versed in it that you're con you're just in that space now all the time and what it means is that when we go to, to the game tomorrow i don't know who's playing where but there's a football game tomorrow but there's some football games right now because of college but professional let's go with professional tomorrow when you buy a ticket to go to the game you walk into the arena you may want to walk on the field and say, let me get in position, coach. But they're like, who are you? Right? Those guys in the field, they've been playing football since they were little kids. They've been doing it all the time. And that's what it means by doing all the work to get into position is that these guys decided to start playing football 20 years ago. Not this morning and not when they bought the ticket. They've been doing it for a long time. There's this uh, shows in the past that they're no, they're no longer around, but it was called Pros versus Joes, where like the highest regular civilian uh, athletes would go against retired professionals, right? And they would get wiped out every time because even a retired professional has it in their system that training and endurance and experience that it's just like normal breathing to them. While the civilian athlete is like, oh, this is my time to do this one thing. Like, nah, these guys have been doing it for a long time. And that's how you have to be. You got to get to a point where you're doing these things constantly, 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 that now it's like, this is normal. It's what I do. And so when somebody asks me about my art, I can jump in into what my brand is, what my product is, who I am, where I am in the market, how much do I charge? And who out there can do what I do? It's crazy. Like, you got to just, like, let it roll off of you. All right. So what does that mean, then? What does it mean? I got more slides. That's what it means. And, and, uh, and by the way, some of this artwork was created in Adobe Illustrator using the generative uh, art tool in there. All right. Let's start with art pricing. All right. 
So our pricing is super, super important. It's the number one thing that matters. Because you can go broke. And that's and I really hate that starving artist word. It's terrible. It, 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 it makes people believe that you should sacrifice for your art and your passion, which is, yes, true. But that doesn't mean I need to live in poverty. No. And, you know... And it's expensive. Art is expensive. We are in an art store right now, Binders Art. Thank you, Binders Art, for the space. Um, but they won't let you walk out with it, with stuff out of here if you don't pay for it. It's just not going to. There are sales, so you know you want to buy that. The canvas is a little crooked at a discount. But that's the thing. We spend so much time and money in our art materials that you have to know your price. You have to know what you're spending. How much are you spending? So consider your costs of materials and your time that you have invested into this um, this piece, particular art product. You need to know what that is. You need to have a a, a um, track. You need to have a, a way to track these expenses and know how much it costs to make this particular thing. So that now I know how much I put into it and now I know, okay, I need to sell it for no less than what I put into it. And that includes my time. Also, you need to check what is the average price for this thing in the industry, in the market. There are people who sell stickers for $5 each one. I'm like, well, that's, that's a little bit pricey. <laughs> but it might be some good artwork. You know, it might be like, well, you know, that's a Batman drawing. And I'll spend anything on a Batman drawing. I'm cool with that. I'm a Batman fan. Um, you know, so so it really comes down to also the price in the industry. What is the, what is the right price for something like this in this particular industry? So stickers, people who collect stickers um, are different than the people who collect Batman things. Are different than the people who collect, you know, Disney things. And what's crazy, if you go to Disneyland or Disney World, and that five dollar sticker at Walmart is twenty five dollars inside the the magical kingdom. There ain't nothing magical about that. The magic is that it's somehow more expensive now, which is crazy, right? And that's the industry. We now know, okay, well, when you go to the movies, you know that bag of popcorn is 10 bucks, but for $10 at Kroger, you get a pack of 10, and you just throw it in your microwave. So there's different situations for the, how the market works. You have to know what that is. What is that like? You know, so somebody who's been 20 years in the industry doing 2D digital illustration is going to charge different, and you should expect different process, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, too, um, how to deal with a customer from someone who is uh, starting out and figuring out that, oh, yeah, I can draw. People say they like my drawings. Yeah, yeah it's a, a big difference. So market and pricing positioning is what we're talking about right now. Let's keep it going. So the art niche and market positioning. Oh my gosh. This is what I was just talking about. You know, Disneyland. So Disney is in right now with the Star Wars and Ahsoka and all that. It's like nuts. That stuff is crazy. It's out there. If you draw any Ahsoka artwork and can put it on a poster, somebody's going to buy it. So because that niche is hot. Um, plushies is something that's hot again. So it, years ago, there was uh, coloring books that were hot. It, like you walk into Barnes and Nobles and the first full set out was all coloring books of everything and anything. So you got to understand, well, what's your art niche? What is your niche? What is it that you do that people like? And don't do what's hot because then you're always chasing something. And by the time you have your product ready, the market has switched. And, 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 and now, you know, you're counting on the, 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 the price on the street for your art product to at least make, make up the money you spent on those art materials that you were willing to spend extra on because you knew you were going to sell this thing for that particular price, and now that price is not there. So I always start with, what do you like to do? What is it you like to create? And then find your people. Find your people. 
So also think about who are you to the industry? So when you find your people, you find your industry. Uh, a friend of mine, he likes to draw mystical, metaphysical illustrations. Oh, this guy can paint. Oh, my gosh. Insane. Fred, you're probably watching this in, on replay if, uh, if you get a chance. And, uh, man, and, like, nobody minds my art. Nobody minds my art. And, like, nobody who doesn't like that. Wait till you find your industry and show them who you are. Show them your work. Like, you're talking about chakras and energies and auras. Come on in. Come on in. And stuff. Come on in. Yes. Have a seat anywhere you want. Uh, you're talking about, you know, all these things and these images. And it's like, no, people who buy Disney stuff are not going to buy that. Unless it's uh, Mickey Mouse and, and, uh, with his magic hat on. That kind of magic. Not this magic. So you got to find your D&D players. You got to find... Your mystical, esoterical readers and collectors and so on. That's the brand position. And now you got to find the people who are going to like what you do. And it's niche. It's, uh, it's, it's relevant only to very few folks. Now, what about, uh, and then also think about what about your art stands out? What is it about it? You know, I like cartoons and I like comics. But you can't just draw any character and then not know enough about that character. Because those who know about that character will see your work and like, oh, that's all. Something's missing. You didn't get it. And it's like, but that's how the picture looks. Yes, but there's something about that type of art style that's very specific to that style. And that those who know will recognize whether or not um, you understand what you're painting and drawing. And so I draw a lot of Aztec artwork. But I grew up in, uh, in L.A., Born and raised in L.A. where there's a lot of history murals all over town. I lived in Mexico when I was a kid. I went to public school in Mexico. I learned about the history. And then I've been addicted to history ever since. And so I read up on everything and I keep up with whatever books are out there and types of art and other artists who draw Aztec stuff. And so it's like my art shows you that I know what I'm talking about. So if you're coming into a particular space, have, are you, and, and that's what they're about, have you spent time in that space? Are you part of that community? Do you really actually appreciate this, or are you just trying to ca capitalize on that opportunity? So this is where the marketplace positioning, your art niche comes into play. Again, that's another drawing by Adobe Illustrator. So, what happens now? I got it, Dan. Um, I, uh, you know, if you're a Disney artist, you know, I've seen these Disney artists. They're amazing. When you go to Disney World, and there's like a whole room with a bunch of artists, and they're all drawing Disney stuff, and they're like fluid. Like, there's no sketching. There's no, you know, there's like, like, dang. Um, they're in the right place, right? Because they're good at it. They like it, and they're getting paid for it. And so when you walk in, you can't just talk to the artist and be like, hey, can you do me a drawing? So just a heads up, I'm, do I'm doing this live on the internet. And then when it's over, this is going to be another 10 minutes or so, then we'll continue our conversation here, okay? All right. And you can feel free to ask questions and interrupt. Um, and so when you walk into those, that, that, that art gallery, you can't just ask the artist, hey, man, draw me something. Because that's what people do to you, right? They, they say, oh, you can draw? Maybe you can draw me. You know, and uh, that people always, maybe you can paint me. So you don't do that with those artists. You can't try, but the artist is going to tell you, go talk to that person at the counter. And the person at the counter will be like, hey, welcome, come on in. Here's our price list. You know, what are you looking to get done today? You know, here's uh, our shipping because you're visiting, your, you don't live in Florida. So you're going to go home eventually. So they got to ship you the artwork and all this stuff. And they're like, yeah, it's going to be $500. And because you're a fanatic, you're like, cool, sold. Right? This is what you call a client relationship management. This is what it means. That you have to have a way to go through the interaction, engagement, relationship building, finally transaction, and you need to know what that is for yourself. So that's the positioning. Like I said earlier, you don't just walk into... 
the stadium and say, cool, coach, put me in. And they're like, who are you? And then you, they're like, all right, fine, go on in there, and then you get crushed. Because you don't never had no practice with real professional football players. And those guys are six feet tall, 300 pounds. Like, if you're not built with muscle like that and hit every on every day, like constantly hit every day, you, you're going you're gonna to cry. And, uh, and, so, and so that's what it happens with an artist. A lot of times we create the work, we have it. Somebody looks at it like, oh, that looks so awesome. How much? And then you're like, ah, I don't know. I don't even want to sell it to you because I wasn't even doing it for that. You know, and so you have to prepare. You have to do the work. So what's some of the work? What are you, you have to figure out what are your business steps of the client journey. And so earlier we were talking about websites and um, email lists. So on your website, you should have a, a way for people to subscribe to your email list. Or on your social media, you should have a way for people to subscribe to your email list. MailChimp is not paying me. Hey, MailChimp, what's up? Sponsorship is... Uh, they're, they're free. You can get a free MailChimp account. I think it's free um, account uh, tier for up to 500 or 5,000 subscribers. Probably 500. In any case, you know, by the time you get to 500 subscribers, you should be selling some kind of artwork so you can pay if you want to keep going. But you should have a way to, in, uh, to uh, approach your customer, your client, with, hey, I got some free stuff, come on through. And then, you know, I'm going to be at Binders selling some artwork, light painting, come on through. And so now your people, I'll be like, I'll be there. I'll come and get that free thing. And I do have $500 extra, you know. And I have a wall, so let me see what I find for this. Or I have a birthday coming up, I, whatever. Whatever the situation, you need to know what are your business steps. How are you going to approach your clients? How are you going to let your clients approach you? Because like I said earlier, folks will ask you, hey, can you paint me? Can you draw me? Like, yeah. Okay, I want it by Monday. You know, oh, awesome. Well, then I'm going to need $500. Oh, but you know, you already draw. What are you talking about? Just finish that face right there, but put a beard on it. That's me. Like, like somehow people think it's just going to come out of you like a magic and there it is, you know. So you need to have a way to talk. You have to have a way to approach people who approach you, a way to respond to people to, who approach you. Like, what is my response? What's the thing that I say? So here's an example, too. So, you know, everybody asks the question, so what do you do? What, what kind of art, uh, what, what are, uh, um, what's your business or, you know, profession or whatever? Nobody asks me that anymore so much. But when, when they do, you need new people. And, uh, or just at the register, you're talking to somebody at the register and they see what you're buying, they say something. So I like to say, yeah, I'm an artist. I get paid to draw. I say it like that. Oh, I'm an artist. I get paid to draw. I add, that whole thing goes together. Don't just say I'm an artist. You know, I mean, you can, but then the people are like, oh, you draw pictures? You got pretty pictures? Oh. That's way different than I'm an artist. Right. That's right. They're like, oh, you draw pictures, huh? You still live at your mama's house? <laughs> you playing with crayons? You know, which crayon flavor do you like best? I don't know. I'm just making things out, right? That's extreme. But yo, people sometimes will treat you that way. Now, that's not a real job. But like growing up, when you're coming up and moving on from high school to the real world, like, no, nah, you can't be an artist, man. Are you crazy? That's not a job. You need to finish dental school or whatever. You know, and it's like, yeah, it, it's uh, I used to tell people I wanted to be a comic book artist and people would laugh. I was in the Marine Corps and I'll tell, yeah, man, I'm going to make comics. And other folks would laugh. <laughs> you stupid. That's dumb. Like, what does that mean? You know, and it's like, but we buy comics in the store. It's a real business. It's a real job. So when I respond with my answer, it's always, yeah, I'm an artist. I get paid to draw. Oh, really? Like, what stuff do you do? Can you draw me something? And then I tell them, well, you know, I do a lot of corporate artwork. I'm already telling them the level. Mm -hmm. Can you do something for me? It's like, yeah. If you're going to use it to market yourself, yes. Because I have to charge you. And then, so I give them my sticker and all that. And then they go to my website and then they see my list of clients. Like, oh, I didn't know you were like that. So, so you have to have a way to talk to folks 
so that you're in a certain way, certain place. And, and, um, and so that's the part of the client journey. Uh, we talked about web forms. But another web form, uh, well, email responses, but another web form is when you have a website, and we'll talk about websites at the end, is, um, you know, because people are going to message you all the time. They're going to say something. See your work, they're going to say something. And so what you want, one of your responses to be, well, fill out the form on my website so we can work. And on the form of your website, it has options. And it'll say, what's your budget? Uh, uh, 500 to 5,000? 5,000 to 50,000? Or 50,000 and up? Because the lowest one starts at $500, you already told people, whoa, hold on, man, I got $10, bro. I want you to do my drawing for 10 bucks. And you've already shut him down. That's part of the client journey. How are you positioning yourself? Are you playing peewee football in the park and a grown adult with little kids? Or are you trying to get into the stadium, go down the tunnel, and your full gear on? Like, I'm a pro. I've been training for this every day. I was selected out of college in the first draft. I got scholarships. I got trophies. I'm ready to sign my contract, but you got to put another zero on that. So all of these things help. Then the last couple of things that are on here are, what are you after? Are you here for sales? And, uh, pro um, and what would you be your project rate? So I mentioned that right now already by the, the uh, web form. And are you here for promotional opportunity? What are you, and it's always going to be different depending on who you're talking to. So um, I'm going to do this class in December at this event called DreamHack. 20,000 people from the Southeast are going to be in uh, Georgia World Congress Center, and I'm going to do a class on illustration. And, uh, and so I'm going to have thousands of stickers. I'm going to hand it out because I'm going to be on stage. You know, when, I, when, I, when I'm talking to the guy who's going to put me in this thing, uh, I am there. He's my, conversa my conversation with him is about promotional opportunity. But when I'm on stage talking to people, now I have two other opportunities that I'm pushing. One is, here, learn what I do, and you can do this too. And part two is, you guys need what I want, so call me. You want this. This is the stuff that I know how to do, that I do all the time, that I've been training my whole life for. I have a $100,000 budget to work in your project. Let's go. That's, that's the positioning. All of it is positioning. All right, let's move it along. The basic of negotiation for artists is very, very important. You must first value your art products. You know what it costs you to buy the canvas, to buy the paint, to buy the, everything that goes with it. The easel, uh, many years ago, when I was doing a lot of graphic design and somebody was asking me to do a flyer for them and I'm like, yeah. And I was charging $50 for the flyer. And uh, she's like, but you already had the computer. Why do you need to charge me 50 bucks? I'm like, because it costs money to buy the computer. <laughs> you know, I was like, what? What, what, what are you? This stuff, you know, now somebody handed it to me, gave it to me, and I played around. You know, you might get a flyer that don't work for you because I'm just playing around. Who knows? But that's the thing. You have to value your art product. You have to value it. <clears throat> Anytime you're ha walking into negotiation for your work, you already have a value for your work product. And you have a value for your talents. You already know, uh, and this is a much longer conversation, ah. uh, but, the bat, but I have two um, points to make. Value your art product. Uh, used to go to the club. You walk up to the club, and there's an artist with his drawings, paper drawings, on the ground in front of the door asking people to buy his drawings for 20 bucks. I'm like, bro, that stuff is on the ground. What are you doing? <laughs> Nobody values your work because you don't value it. 
when I produce art shows, and then artists bring me a piece of paper where they're drawing, and they're like, here, hang this up. I'm like, how am I hang this up? Oh, just put some tax on it. Stick it on the wall. I'm like, no, man. $10 at Walmart or uh, Michael's has sales on frames all the time. Put it on a frame, please. Value your work. Value your talents. You should, you should uh, know what your life costs are. You should know what your monthly budget is. You should know what it costs to live your life. How much money do you spend a month just to live your life? Rent, the utilities, you know, car, uh, transportation, food, stuff like that. What is it? What's the number? We're going to make it simple. Let's say $1,000, but that's unrealistic. In any case, that's a simple number. So if your, your budget is $1,000, that you need to be able to, to, to live your life is $1,000, that's $250 a week. Five days a week, because you guys should have weekends off. That's $50 a day. So every day you're going after 50 bucks. And if it takes you three days to paint a painting, that's $150 that you need to add to the cost of your materials. Is somebody going to pay that? Maybe not your cousin. Maybe not your mom. Maybe not someone you, you know, pass on the street or someone you, you know, meet in front of the club while your drawing is on the ground. But with all the extra stuff that you do as a professional artist in the social media we'll, we'll talk about in the website, you can get in front of the person who will appreciate it, who will value it. And I mentioned this earlier before we went live, the murals that I, that I was working on. Um, this guy reached out to me, we talked, and, you know, and I was thinking, oh, he wanted four murals at his uh, warehouse. And, uh, and I was like, ooh, that's going to that's gonna be some number. It's going to be a number. And you're already afraid inside, right? Because if I say this number, they're not going to like it. They're going to haggle me because everybody haggles you for $20. Anything over 100 bucks, they already want a discount. So, so I'm like, dang. So I said, fine, now I got to do it. I got to put this, this, uh, this uh, quote together. It's going to have to be what it's what's supposed to be because I deserve that money to get paid. I, needed, I deserve to get paid this. So I send it off. He says, oh, let's get on the call. I said, fine, let's get on the call. And I'm already thinking, okay, when people want to talk to you, it's because they want to haggle you. They're going to say something. So I get on the call. I say, hey, what's up? He says, I like this, Dan. I want to make sure this is in, this is, this is that. And, uh, and he says, uh, we're going to get you a check. I was like, what? He didn't haggle me one time. Like, what? Oh, my God. Because there's somebody out there who will pay it. You just have to position yourself in the right place between the client and the product, and bam, value your talents. Do not negotiate against yourself. You're waiting, and this happened years ago. I was doing a sponsorship deal, and I told them how much, and uh, immediately the next day, they're like, damn, we can't afford that. And I was thinking, oh, and, uh, and I kept thinking, okay, well, what can I say? Could I say this? Could I say that? I got busy two days later. I was very busy. I couldn't answer the email, but I was still thinking about it, thinking about it. And then they sent me another email. They said, okay, Dan, we got it in the budget for you. Ah! What, ha what happened if I started to negotiate right then and there out of fear that, oh, no, I'm going to lose this? Value yourself. Don't negotiate against yourself. Let them negotiate against themselves. Just be quiet. Don't say nothing. Mm. Mm. Identify your client persona. And this is how, what, what we, what a client persona, what we mean is your client for the, your type of artwork, let, let's pretend because it's real easy, you know, you like to draw Mickey Mouse and Disney stuff. Okay, fine. Your client persona is anyone walking around with mouse ears at the mall. That's your client. Right? Like, they like Disney. They like Mickey Mouse stuff. That's my client. I know them. They'll spend five hundred dollars. They they pay for the Disney Plus. They'll spend five hundred dollars on the print of their favorite thing. Um, I was talking about uh, going to my uh, one of my old interns' house a couple weeks ago, and he has um, a five painting piece. It's five uh, canvases, and it has uh, the Mandalorian, 
and uh, Boba Fett and Ahsoka and so on, all in one big uh, five pieces in his wall. Like he bought that because he's a fan, and he and he has like three Mandalorian tattoos, and he's deep into he has the Mandalorian helmet, all that stuff. That's your customer. That's how you know. So you have to understand the person who likes my work. Who would they be? They would be the kind of people that do this, that have that, and they have expendable income to buy my stuff. I need to be ready. And when I see them, I know them. I'm like, yeah. <clears throat> when I used to do tattoos, I was a tattoo artist for 20 years. Anyone I saw with a tattoo, like, that's my customer. Not yet. Wait till I give them a flyer. And I talk to them about tattoos. And then they start telling me, oh, well, how much you charge me if I do this, if I do that? That's my customer. I know. That's the persona. You're looking for to identify who is the person out there that's going to buy your work and going to have that. The last thing on this list is identify when to say no. And I just talked about those emails, you know, and, um, and they, uh, they negotiated. They, I didn't have to negotiate it. Negotiate. They came out with the budget. And like, boom, we're working. Now we're good. You know, but what if um, they want to go too low? And now, you, now you're giving money away. Like you need $50 a day, right, to hit your budget for that month. But you're only getting paid $25. Like, well, where's the other $25 going to come from? I'm giving them my labor, my work, and, I, and I'm taking it away from somewhere. I have a family. I have grandkids. I have a wife. And children, I'm taking it from my family. I'm taking it from my vacation. I'm taking it from somewhere. No. Sometimes you just say no. Say, all right, well, sorry I can't help you. Good luck on your project. I hope you find an artist for you. Can you help me find someone? Like, no, because I'm not going to tell this other artist to work for peanuts for your project. Then the other artist will be like, damn, what are you doing to me? Why are you sending me a bum? Right? Nah. So you got to say no. Say, no, good luck. It's cool. It's cool. I get it. And I have these conversations all the time. You have to be willing to say no. It's hard. It's hard because you're like, oh, if they just said yes, that pays for three months of my budget. And, but they're, they're, that's too much. That's crazy. I couldn't do that. I couldn't even come to my wife and be like, yeah, I've got a new project. And my wife's like, okay, let me send them an invoice because that's what my wife does. She's a business, business manager. And then she's going to look at the numbers like, what are you talking about? Who did this deal? No. Because when you say no, enough no's, you'll find a yes. But if you get caught up in the yeses, and then you're stuck on this project, and then here comes the one with the budget, and you can't take it because you're stuck on this little yes. Portfolio leverage. All right. So the positioning comes down to your portfolio. We're going to get into website in a second. And, um, but this is it. Your portfolio is not just pictures, pretty pictures. That's where it starts, but that's not it. That's not what a portfolio is. A portfolio is proof of your work that you can do. So in this case, it's more than your art. What is it? It's the document of your process. And so my, um, there was a time period when I shifted, and I had this conversation with another artist. And um, back then, I had a warehouse, and we had an office in my warehouse. And so I used to invite artists to come and hang out and work. And I had tables and desks, kind of a co-working space. And I let artists just hang out. Like, come on, you need a place to hang out and get creative and internet access and waters and coffee? Come on. It was free. And so this one artist used to hang out with me all the time. We used to talk business. And one day... Um, we're focused on working on our portfolios, like updating. Every now and then, you got to update your website, update your portfolio, update everything. And so, um, and so I'm sitting here working on mine, he's working on his, and I look over, and like, he's changing his whole website from graphic design, illustration, and everything else that we did. We did a bunch of different stuff, same stuff. And so that's why we hang out together a lot. And, that, and then I, I see him switching everything to just illustration. Everything I see on his screen is illustration, illustration. So I said, so what are you doing? And he tells me that he's tired of doing graphic design for other people, and now he just wants to um, focus on illustration. And I said to him, man, but you're letting go a lot of business. You know, 
what, what do you mean you're not gonna do this thing that's constant? Graphic design is a constant thing. Like that's like the first step in any artist's um, life, business, career. When uh, all you need is to uh, understand how to use Photoshop and stuff like that. And uh, and so he's like, yeah, I'm tired. I don't want to do it anymore. This and that. And I was like, man, you're crazy. Well, um, shortly after that, he went back to work, and I was by myself. Come on in. And uh, and so I'm by myself in my warehouse. And I start thinking to myself, you know what? He's right. I'm tired of graphic design. You can keep going this way, I think, this room. <clears throat> Let me uh, move something here. This is not working anymore. So, so I started thinking, like, you know what? He's right, man. His name is Dave. Flavor Dave. And, uh, and I'm like... I'm tired of doing all this other stuff. I just want to draw. Can I just draw, draw, draw? Can I just do the drawings? And so, and so that meant that the range of art product that I was producing was going to go niche. And that meant that I wasn't going to have this type of clients anymore. So my amount of money that I was generating is going to drop down. So I said, well, how can I kick it back up? but only with this much. Well, that means I gotta raise the price. I gotta charge more. Not only do I need to charge more, but I need to prove to these clients that I'm worth this much more. And that's where the documenting of your process, of your creative process comes into play. Because there's a price point for under $100 where your client who pays you <coughs> excuse me under hundred dollars they get they they are very picky over a hundred dollars they're not as picky but they expect a lot and then there's a higher number and i used to say this i want to get paid for my work then i said i want to get paid hundreds of dollars for my work and now i say i want to get paid thousands of dollars for my work and then there's this other level where now they're willing to pay whatever so they don't have to worry about you producing the thing you say you're going to do. And that's a hard thing to get over because artists are already expected to be temperamental, emotional, it's all about whether they feel in it or not. You know, and, and the ones who say they want to do something but don't do it have tons of excuses. And that's, so you're fighting this mentality of the professional world looking at creators like, well, can you really do it? And so I don't want to be the guy that says, put me in, coach, I'm ready. I want to be the guy be like, to, to walk up to the coach and coach say, come on in, because I've seen your work. I've seen your tape. I've seen your place. I know you can do it. And that's what your portfolio is. It shows a process from beginning to end. It shows that you have, you can start with a concept, with words, ideas. No art, no nothing. And then through that process, you're slowly building the things that need to go together. And you know how to put it together. By the end, you have a finished product. And a finished product, in my case, has been children's books, coloring books, um, beer can design. And, I, and I, it's an amazing thing to walk into a store and the in the beer aisle, I like, do like beer, and, uh, and you see your design on something that people are buying and taking out of there. It's like, this is my artwork. I drew that. That did not exist before. That was a sketch, very rough sketch. When the client was telling me what they wanted, I was roughing it out. But like, I think that's it. I, 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 I go back and forth with the client and then have a better drawing, better drawing, then a, a approved drawing, and boom. Now it's, it's finished and it's in a can. I know I have a process from beginning to end, and people who look at my portfolio can tell that I know how to go from nothing to something based on some words. And we call those case studies. Once you organize it right, and for so fine art, what does that mean? That means that you have an artist statement that explains where the inspiration comes from, what were you feeling, what was this about? And now you have 20 paintings that go together. 
These things belong together. And so when a, you're trying to sell one painting, when you're selling a painting and a person walks into your booth, like, oh, that painting is beautiful. How much? And then you tell them $500. They're like, dang, for real? You're like, yeah. And that's because this painting has cousins. All of these right here go together with that one. There's 10 of them. So the real price is $5,000. And the person's like, well, I'll take it. You got me. Because this means this, that, that, that. It goes together. There's a reasoning for this. In graphic design, illustration world, there's, there's always a message. There's always a point. In fine art, the art is the point. But you have to be able to explain it. You have to be able to share it. And maybe share a part of yourself of why this even exists. What does this mean? Why should I care? I should have included storytelling. But that's what a portfolio is. A portfolio shows the magnitude of how great and valuable your work is. It means something. I keep going and on. I'm sorry. All right. So on your social media presence, you will document your process. You're going you're gonna to take pictures. And I have pictures. And, uh, and if you're uh, here in person, you'll see them uh, about my latest uh, painting. It's uh, nine feet long by five feet tall. And I take pictures constantly from the beginning, from the first time I roll out the canvas to, to, the, to like hang it, pictures, pictures, frame last videos. I have a frame last video going on right there. It's a, it, no sound, so it just goes real fast, but it's recording. So later, when I'm pitching a class somewhere, um, they, they've seen that video. They're like, oh, damn, we know you teach. Yeah, yeah, we've seen your video. That, that's, that's proof of my work. They already understand that I have document. They've seen the document of, of my process. <coughs> so I constantly take pictures, constantly have something that then I add to my website. In my blog, I talk about, yes, uh, my painting was at Hateville. They pay me to uh, put a painting together, and uh, here it is. And, and the idea I had was this. The requirements were that. And, uh, and these were my steps, and I have the space for it. So now... Somebody who's rich is like, we need 10 of those. But they will not have seen my work first. What they will have done is search mural artists, large painting artists, large scale artists, whatever, acrylic artists, astic artists, and I'll be in the, uh, one of the 100 people they pull up, right? Then they're like, okay, well, let's start going for the ones who have a website. Well, only half of them have a website. And they're like, well, let's see the social media for those who do have a website. A few have random pictures of them in the bathroom. A few of them have memes, right? They out. Like, what are you talking about? And then, so, so now the, I'm in that number that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And they're like, well, oh, these got videos. Let's check out their videos. And, and they're out at the club dancing and stuff. But my video is like, hey, what's up, everybody? I'm DTM, Delta Tango Mike. Check out my painting. This is what I did. They're like, oh, he can talk about his work. The stuff he's putting out there is documenting his work. Now they found me. All of that stuff I've been doing all this time finally got narrowed down. And so now it's between me and two other people. And now they want to have a conversation. And because I have my client journey laid out, and I know what I want. I can answer the questions and like, I'm good. And I can say no. So when they lowball me, they're like, you know what? That's cool. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. I hope your project goes well. You know, and all right, well, we do have two other people, you know, and I had heard this before. You know, what makes you stand out between you and these two other people? I'm like, well, I don't know those two other people. I don't know. Only you know what makes me stand out. Why'd you call me? Right? Right? Yeah. Don't make me beg you. Put me in, coach. Right? That's what social media does. Man. And so then, you know, I'm gone. A week later, like, you know, we're good, Dan. We want you. Boom, I just sold 10 paintings. $5,000 each one. We're rich. We're going on vacation. I'm going to paint from the beach. I don't know. <laughs> social media also allows you the place to find your community. Engage with your community. Those posts, and I, and I mentioned this earlier, um, that uh, the classes that I teach, half, half my audience is those who want to do what I do. So I'm inspiring others. 
That's my community. We're all in this thing. And the other half is uh, finding the client who wants to hand me money just to do work for, for me to do for them what I do. So I'm engaging. It's constantly an engagement. It's a buildup. It's a buildup. And somewhere along the line, you'll find your mentors. You'll find people who you learn from. The other artists who are doing this thing that you want to do, and you're like, oh, man. My artist mentor, he wears Adidas stuff all the time. And I don't wear Adidas just because of him, because I like it. I like it. I like the, the, little, um, the little suit. What do you call these things? Jogging suit? Jogging suit. Uh, track suit, yeah. Then it's cool. I don't like all of them. I just like this one. And, um, but that's what he wears, right? Well, he's worked with them. Like, that's how bad he is. Like, he's nasty. From the, from the 90s, he was way ahead than uh, many other artists. And so I've just been following him. And I listen to him and I ask him questions. And he sits down and tells me stuff. And I say, okay, the next thing I do is that. Boom. And, and that's because you've engaged with people. You wouldn't know it until you start talking to folks. And, and the social media allows you to do that. With people all over the world. I got clients in Europe. Never met them in real life, but their money spent. So we, we built a relationship. All this builds that trust and value so that people are willing to invest in you. Like, that's cool. I wouldn't buy it for myself, but you know what? That's all right. And so that's how people have Kofi's and um, what's that? Patreons and things like that. They get money donated to them. I have a subscription. This is not an ad. Um, on Behance where you can subscribe to me for $10 a month. And so subscribe to my content. So the, part, the Discord is part of it. And there's a lot of people on Discord. It's not um, pricing on Discord, but it includes Discord. It includes access to, to, to me. And, and the majority of folks, as a matter of fact, uh, Bree is one of my subscribers, big-time supporter. Uh, and the majority of those people, like at least seven or eight of them, I've never talked to them. They don't ask me anything. They just want to support what I do. It's not a lot of money, but it's great. I appreciate it. They're willing to just say, here's 10 bucks, man, every month. I don't even know what you're doing, but I know it's good stuff. I have built trust and value in my community. All right, that's it. We're done to the end almost. Okay, one more picture after this. Um, website and portfolio alternatives. Don't spend money yet. Do not spend money if you don't have to, unless you got it. And it's only spend money when you have it because that's what you want, you need it, you need this next level. So free alternatives are Behance.net, and I'm streaming to Behance right now. Uh, Behance is a online portfolio that is um, owned by Adobe. So the people who make Photoshop, Illustrator, and all that own Behance, and uh, is a real easy way to have a presence. You set up your uh, account, it's free to have an account, and um, Upload your artwork. We can talk about what the how should you should do it and so on. There's ways that your portfolio should look. But there's also there's a in, in that website there's a switch where they will turn that uh, Behance portfolio page into a website with a contact form and about me and all that stuff. So that then you only send people that other link and not the Behance. The Behance most of the time, it's full of a bunch of stuff related to arts because you want to be in it. But if you're talking to a client, you don't need them. You don't want them to create an account and then look at your portfolio. You want them to have that portfolio link. So it's real. It's free. It's easy. Art Station is just like Behance, and Deviant Art is um, an old head uh, portfolio website. Been around a long time, and um, they keep improving the way it looks. So it's all right. <coughs> Excuse me. The point is that it's free. It's free. And so, like in my Behance, it's behance.net forward slash the creative genius. So it's very simple. You know, you don't want like a whole bunch of words and numbers and letters and stuff. It's like, well, how do I put that on the wet on my sticker? You know, you keep it simple. Try to keep it simple. So all of these websites do it. Blogger is still around. That is like it's crazy. It's one of the first Google products. <clears throat> from a long time ago. Back when I was building websites, I used to build websites on Blogger. And this is, um, this is, uh, it was the early 2000s, yeah, late 2000s. Um, so Blogger is still around, it's still free. 
and um, you can create a website on Blogger. It's, it's easy. It's, it's not very robust. It's not stuff made for selling. None of these websites are made for selling, but they're made for setting up a portfolio so that you have an online presence. So when people ask you, well, where can I find your work? You can say Instagram and here's my website. All right, last thing is find me anywhere on the internet on the Delta Tango mic. That is me. That is all my work. Everything I do is Delta Tango mic. That's who I am. El Azteca Moderno is all my Aztec art and uh, it's paintings, illustrations, drawings. As a matter of fact, for the past three, four weeks, I've been posting every other day or so a new illustration that I finished as a coloring page. And so if you follow the links and those posts, you'll get to the page on my website where you can download the PDF of all the coloring pages. Vector Maestros is how I, where I teach digital art and illustration for those who uh, want to take the step into mastering their craft, and it includes the business of art. So as you grow into your talents, then you can start charging people what you negotiate. And then Artist King, is nonstop free resources for artists to develop their art careers. Constant. Now we're just pumped. This is where you see this now on YouTube. This is why uh, you, you are looking at this now on YouTube on the Artist King channel. I am DTN, Delta Tango Mike. Big ups to Binders Art for providing us with the space. And, uh, and thank you all for being here and, uh, and watching this online. We're going to continue the conversation here live in the classroom. So um, if you are in the ATL, every two weeks we are here hanging out in Binders Art in the basement. It's the basement, but it's amazing. Oh, my gosh. They have some big thing going on where um, if you find a skeleton, I shouldn't say that because I want to find the skeleton. Oh, you found it? Oh, so that was for today? No, no, no. Oh, okay. So day. once a day, once a day, if you find a skeleton, you get like 10% off and some kind of gift if you spend over $25. And, uh, and so they were explaining that to me. And I said, spending $25 is no problem in this store because as an artist, you like everything. Anyways, thank you very much, everybody. I am DTN, Delta Tango Mike. See you next time. I stream every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm hanging out at Binders every two weeks. So see y'all soon. Catch you on the flip side, everybody. Peace out.